नाम संकीर्तन की बृहत विडंग की नित्य गोपिमंदी और ग्लोरी तदि समृद्धि भोक्ती और ग्लोरी तदि समृद्धि भोक्ती और ग्लोरी तदि समृद्धि भोक्ती ग्रंथराज श्रीमद भगवता की जाय ग्लोरी तो श्री गुरु श्री गौरंग ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Reading today from Shrimad Bhagavatam, eleventh canto, seventh chapter, text number twenty-eight. Tvantu kalpa kavir daksha, subhago mit bhasana. नकाता ने हसे किंचिच चदोन मता पिशाच्चा बत तुम तो कल्पा कबीर दक्षा सुभागों मित भाषना नकाता ने हसे किंचिच Jado matta pishachavat Tuntu kalpam kavir daksha Subhago mitta bhashana Nakata neha se kinshit Jado matta pishachavat Anakalpa kabir daksha Subhago mit vashana Nakata neya se kinchit Jado mata vishacha bhat Tandu kalpa kabir daksha Subhago mit vashana Kalpa kavidaksha, Subha gomitta bhashana, Gataneha jayashit, Vaishnavit, Tvam, you, to, However, kalpa capable, kavi learned, taksha expert, sub subhaga handsome, amita bhashana having nectarian speech, na are not, karta a doer. Na ihase, you do not desire. King Chet, anything. Jada, stupefied. Unmata, maddened. Pishachavat, like a ghostly creature. Translation and purport. You, however, although capable learned, expert, handsome, and most eloquent, are not engaged in doing anything, nor do you desire anything. Rather, you appear stupefied and maddened, as if 
you were a ghostly creature. Everyone can please repeat. You, however, although capable, learned, expert, handsome, and most eloquent, are not engaged in doing anything, nor do you desire anything. Rather, you appear stupefied and maddened as if you were a ghostly creature. Reports. Ignorant persons often think that renounced spiritual life is meant for those who are impotent or homely or incompetent in practical worldly affairs. Sometimes foolish people say that religious life is a crutch for those who are not expert enough to achieve a high status in society. Therefore, King Yadu has described the qualities of the mendicant Brahmana in order to show that the Brahman has taken to renounce spiritual life in spite of great potential for worldly success. The Avaduta Brahman is described as being expert, learned, good-looking, eloquent, and even and in every sense qualified to be a great material success. Still, the Avaduta has renounced material life and taken to Krishna consciousness, going back home, back to Godhead, for an eternal life of bliss and knowledge in the real work of a human being. The followers of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu simultaneously cultivate their own Krishna consciousness and strenuously endeavor in missionary work to help others become Krishna conscious. Often, foolish persons deride the devotees by saying, why don't you get a job? They think that one who is sincerely endeavoring for spiritual enlightenment and who is also enlightening others is not doing anything practical. Foolish materialists will pay millions of dollars to extend their lives by a few weeks or months in a hospital, but they do not appreciate someone endeavoring for an eternal life. There is no actual logic in material life. The act of trying to enjoy without Krishna is in itself the culmination of irrationality. And thus, we cannot expect to find anything ultimately rational or logical in a materialistic life devoid of Krishna consciousness. Many devotees of Krishna come from wealthy, learned, and influential families, and they take to Krishna consciousness in order to perfect their lives, and certainly not due to lack of opportunity for material advancement. Although sometimes persons in material distress approach the Supreme Lord for help in material life, a real devotee of Lord Krishna voluntarily gives up all kinds of material enjoyment, knowing that nothing but love of Krishna and service to his lotus feet are the actual perfection of life. Om Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurum Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhuttale Swayam Rupa Kadahmahyam Tadati Swapadantikam Namahom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhuttale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pastyatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adveta Gadadha Shri Vashari Gauravaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
So first I'd like to express it's a great uh, privilege and pleasure to try to offer some service here by addressing all of you and by your blessings I'll be able to say something meaningful. Also great pleasure to be here and see so many enthusiastic devotees serving their lordships so nicely and uh, many brahmacharis living in uh, austere conditions. So this is what Srila Prabhupada wanted. This is what Sri Sarvabhama Bhattacharya glorified Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for that Bhairagya Vidya Nija Bhakti Yoga. That Bhakti Yoga means you know, that Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojitaha Janiyat Yasu Bhairagyam Janachaya to come. It means that automatically in the life of a devotee that renunciation and knowledge will appear. Just like this whole beginning of this chapter uh, where Uddhava is lamenting that Krishna is going to leave and how can I possibly stay here in this material world without Krishna? Now in the fourth canto, 30th chapter, text number 32, Srila Prabhupada in his purport, he says that a devotee does not want to go to the spiritual world. No. What? This is you know, kind of surprising, no? But actually he said because a devotee simply wants to serve Krishna, whether he be in the spiritual world, just like Chitraketu, he's, when uh, Parvati saw that Chitraketu was smiling after she cursed him, she thought, and you know, he folded his hands like, thank you very much. You know, generally when you get a curse, you don't say thank you very much. Of course, a Vaishnava, a pure Vaishnava, is grateful. Sees that patiently awaits the mercy of the Lord, however it comes, because they know that because I am the cause of whatever, whatever the situation is, be it uh, pleasurable or be it difficult, I created it, and this is the Lord's opportunity. This is... This is my opportunity to take advantage of the Lord's mercy, however it will manifest. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, he knows how to give whatever I need. And in the proper proportion, the, just the right amount, just the right thing. And therefore, I have full faith. But still, so Srila Prabhupada says there that a devotee is not so anxious Actually, he's more anxious to stay here in this world and execute the, the uh, order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Of course, such a devotee we're talking about is a Mahabhagavat. No. We chant, uh, of course, we chant every day, Janame uh, Janame Prabhu Hoy. No. That birth after birth, uh, I want you to be my Prabhu. I want to be your servant. No. But that... Srila Prabhupada, one time a devotee said, Srila Prabhupada, I don't even want to go to the spiritual world. No. And Prabhupada said, you should want to go. No. Because no. That not wanting to go to the spiritual world, this is the position of the Mahabhagavat. This is the position of a very surrendered devotee who is simply attached to the orders of the Supreme Lord and his devotee. But Prabhupada said, you should want to go. Because otherwise... Your wanting to stay here will not be uh, out of a pure desire. You want to stay here to enjoy this material world, to continue. You want to say, Krishna, take away all my desires, but not this one and not this one. No, Everything you can take, but these three, no, leave those intact. Uh, so when we're on that platform, better to want to go back home, back to God. No. But in this case, Uddhava, he does not want to go, uh, does not want to stay in this world because he's a personal associate of the Lord. No. Just like Sri Harida Thakur. No. He began to uh, 
One day Govinda came with Mahaprasadam and he said, I, I can't eat, I haven't finished my rounds. Uh, but you have to take some Maha, Maha Prasadam, you must take. So, okay, took one little piece. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally came and he said, my dear Haridas, you've chanted enough rounds for many lifetimes. No, you don't have to follow any prescribed number of rounds. And Haridas uh, said, my dear Lord, I will reveal my, my real anxiety I know that you are preparing to leave this world and I cannot conceive of being in this world without you. And therefore I beg you, please let, let me go before you. And the Lord said, but the Haridas, this presents a very great dilemma. Because how can I live in this world without you? Now, this is the competition that goes on between the Lord and his devotee. But anyway, he said, let me think about it and I'll come back tomorrow and I'll give you my opinion, my conclusion. And then he came back, of course, and Lord Chaitanya put his lotus feet over Haridas Thakur's heart and Haridas left this world. Because a devotee cannot, a devotee who's a personally associating with the Lord cannot conceive of this world. Just like when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left all of his devotees. They simply wanted to leave also. But the Lord told them to stay, the six Goswami. But then when Rupa and Sanatan left, Raghunath, he thought, how can I live without the Lord who appears in his topmost pure devotees? And he was thinking, let me jump off Govardhan. But then he was told not to do so. Uh, even uh, Murari Gupta, when he was thinking that the Lord was going to leave and take sannyas and, and leave him and without any association, uh, Murari was, he, uh, he took a knife and he was thinking, better, I, I, how can I live without my Lord without a moment? I mean, but then Lord Chaitanya came to his house and he said, Murari, give me the knife. No. No. And uh, what knife? I said, you know which knife. And then he brought it. He said, same thing as he told Sanatana Goswami, that body belongs to me. It doesn't belong to you. No. I have a purpose for it. I therefore, give up this nonsense idea. I have so, many, so much service for you to do. So these kinds of devotees, like Uddhava, this is, the begin, this is what begins this whole episode that he cannot conceive, but the Lord tells him that I, I have something for you to do. I want you to go back home to God. I want you to go back home. No, you should go. This material world and this Kali Yuga is coming in is not very nice. One time I heard a class by Srila Prabhupada. And he was talking about, he was, he was speaking about the 12th canto, describing the symptoms of Kali Yuga as it advances more and more. And then he said that, uh, Prabhupada said, when he started reading, the, he was reading just the verses. And uh, of course at that time there was no 12th canto with purports. No. And, and then when he got to the part about that people would only be one meter high, you know, there was nothing to drink, no. Uh, so, uh, Prabhupada looked at everyone and he said, so better you get out now, no. don't wait for this. No. Better you get out of this material world. So, the Lord told uh, Uddhava, yes, you should leave, but, uh, you know, but I have, you know, I've, I did so many things, but there are some things I didn't do. I, I satisfied the desire of so many devotees, but there are some devotees that I wasn't able to satisfy. And of course, he, he said, not an Arayan, but actually, he was saying that if I simply leave without giving instruction and having someone to give those, to, to carry out those instructions, no, 
Although at that time the Lord had already delivered Bhagavad Gita, one may think, well, he already gave Bhagavad Gita. No. But the Lord wanted to give a more complete Gita, which emphasized devotional service. Bhagavad Gita, because it's meant for everyone. No. It's meant for everyone. Therefore, you know, the devotional service is mentioned in the ninth chapter, but even then, it's mostly speaking about uh, that uh, akama karma yoga, no? not so much this kama karma yoga, not so much about uh, pure bhakti. Very, no, there's only a few verses mention pure bhakti, no? and of course, Srila Prabhupada amplifies that because he wants everyone to come to the platform of bhakti. But at the time, Krishna was speaking, no, just like. Shukadeva Goswami, he appeared as an impersonalist you know, because he had to, when he would deliver the Bhagavatam, he would have, the, in the audience, there were so many Mayavadis, there were Mayavadis, there were devotees, there were yogis, so, such a mixed audience that uh, he spoke on so many different subject matters. You know. If it would have been just been Pariksha Maharaj only, then he could have just spoken the tenth canto. No, there would have been no need, but because it was for everyone. But the eleventh canto, no, Krishna wanted to Uddhava. Uh, he wanted to explain all these things to Uddhava so that bhakti would be emphasized. In the form of Kapila Dev, he emphasized bhakti. And now in the form of uh, in speaking to Uddhava, he emphasized bhakti more and more. But then Uddhava, began to lament you know, that, who am I? I'm simply interested in this material world. I simply see things in, in terms of duality of this material world. You know. I don't understand you know, the real purpose of life. Otherwise, he was again making a plea. You no, know, He was like saying, well, you know, just take me back home, back to God. Who am I? How can I possibly understand? This was his argument. And so then Krishna begins to preach to Uddhava that actually anyone who sees things in this material world, uh, happiness and distress, the duality of this material world, previously in the beginning of this canto, you know, this was discussed to King Nimi. When King Nimi received the Nava Yogendras, he was so happy. You know, uh, that he had gotten this opportunity so much so he didn't offer them even water or a place to sit. No. He was so anxious to get this knowledge. He said that I'm a king. No, just like Patapa Rudra. No, he tried so hard to get the association of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but only by giving up the position of king, otherwise giving up the mentality of a king and taking the mentality of a pure devotee of the Lord, was he able to get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Nimi, he thought, uh, uh, I can't spend time on all these, you know, these different types of etiquette. Immediately he said, how, how fortunate I am to get your association. Who knows how long it will last? Maybe just for the milking of a cow. No. And that's not very long. So I want, immediately he asked questions. And one, so they began to discuss, to reveal to him the, uh, the essence of, of this world. And so then they were discussing why is it, why is it that everyone is in such miserable condition, such anxiety? Bayam dvitiya viniveshita syat. Because everyone is following dvitiya, the secondary cause, not the real cause. And therefore, uh, and therefore everything is reversed. Instead of being the servant of the Lord, we try to make the Lord into our servant. And this is the problem in the material world. Trying to tanmaya uh, to uh, and therefore the solution to cross over this maya uh, 
Bhaktayakate Sham Guru Devatatma. That one should exclusively take to the process of devotional service and, and serve the spiritual master who is the representative of all the demigods. And then he said that, of, that all of this fear and anxiety in this material world, it's all due to the duality. And how, how does that duality manifest? Why is there duality? How does the duality manifest? Because dhyatur dhyā svapna mano rato yataha because we are meditating on our intelligence perceives things in, on two planes swapna the plane of dreaming and manorata daydreaming night dreaming and daydreaming no. night dreaming we can identify we, anyone can understand a night okay, when you're in the dream at night you don't understand it's a dream but as soon as you wake up well, that was a dream of course, if it was a nice dream, like I was a king or you know, I was very rich and happy in this material world, and you know, think, then you wake up, let me, let me go back to sleep. Uh, that was a nice, let me continue that. But if it wasn't such a nice dream, then we're very happy to wake up. But a devotee, the only nice dream is Krishna. You know, there is no other nice dream. But the daydream, manorata, you know, on the chariot of the mind, the mind takes us through the day uh, with all kinds of desires and ambitions. I want this, I want that, I want so many things. Oh. Uh, and that daydream, oh, that's very difficult to give up. Oh. We, we can't identify it as a dream. We think it's a reality. So much so that sometimes we put Krishna on the secondary platform. Yes, I want to be Krishna conscious. As soon, no. As soon as I finish this, as soon as I have enough money, how can I be Krishna conscious if I don't have enough money? How will my family survive? How will this happen? How will that happen? No. And therefore Krishna uh, is future. Or for some devotees, Krishna is past. No. No. Sometimes people, oh, I was a brahmachari, I was a book distributor, I did this, I did that. No. And now I have to concentrate on... Uh, my real, real life, just like one time I was speaking to a devotee, he was in anxiety. You know? and, he sa and so I said, well, why don't we just read the Bhagavatam? I was trying to you know, help him get out of his anxiety. Why don't we? So I said, why don't we just read the Bhagavatam? And he said, no, no, no. I want to talk about reality. You know? And I said, well, I thought the Bhagavatam was reality. You know? uh, so he, uh, well, I guess so. Yeah. This is, this is our problem, you know, that the daydream is very difficult to give up. You know, and therefore, uh, the Bhagavatam advises us you know, that to give up the daydream, you should understand, tat karma sankalpa bikalpakam mano, that this is just hankering, you know, uh, accepting and rejecting the things that have come from karma, no. And it's all being done by the mind. No. The mind has this dual conception. Kim badram, kim abadram ba. No. What is good? What is actually good and what is bad? No. The Bhagavatam later on in this canto. No, what is, how can we figure these things out? No. That dvaitasya vastuna kiyat. That uh, all of this is Avastuna. Everything in this material world is avastuna. No? It is uh, very difficult to to distinguish and understand. No? Uh, <clears throat> that bachutum tad anritam. That we should understand this material world is is simply a temporary place. Manasatvaktamevacha. No? And uh, just by manasadhatum evacha, and by meditating on things with the mind doesn't make them real. No. Because we conceive of the mental platform 
as the highest manifestation. It's the, it's the most subtle thing that we can perceive constantly. Even intelligence, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not there. But the mind is always there. You know? Intelligence, you can have it and sometimes you, you lose it. But you never lose the mind. You know? It's always very active. You know? It's said that most people have between 60 and 84,000 thoughts a day. You know? It doesn't seem like that, but that's actually what we're, you know, the mind you know, uh, constantly. That means like how many thoughts a minute? Uh, like a, you know, a few thousand thoughts, uh, I mean a few hundred thoughts a minute. You know. Very, very complex, the mind. So, uh, so therefore, uh, the, the solution, uh, buddho niru jyat abhayam tata syat. Therefore, the solution for this is to develop real intelligence, uh, analyze things very clearly in terms of Guru Shastra and Sadhu. This is what the Bhagavatam advises us. And then we can see, see things clearly. So, so therefore, Krishna, he's come to this point. Uh, so, Uddhava is saying, nothing in this world that matters, nothing... No, and therefore he embarks on the story of the Avadutta Brahman. No. Why does he do that? Because the Avadutta Brahman was very expert in taking everything in this world and converting it into Krishna consciousness. No. He teaches us, this is the first teaching of Krishna to Uddhava, that how this Avadutta Brahman could see the most ordinary, even the most despicable thing, the prostitute, this and that, everything, you know, the earth, the tree, all these things. He, he converted it into he, his guru. You know. Actually, when one begins Krishna consciousness, you know, uh, very difficult and very, very, with great difficulty, we can accept, you know, Shishi Radha Gopinath. We can accept Krishna as the supreme, you know, as our authority. And then you make a little advancement. Then you can accept the guru. You no. Know? One guru. That's it. You know, I don't want any more authority. Like everybody else knows. And then we make a little more advancement and we accept the guru and, uh, and advanced Vaishnavas. You know? And then we make a little more advancement. We accept all Vaishnavas. You know? Except for this one and that one. No. All Vaishnavas. You, know? you make a little more advancement. And then you accept all the living entities as your guru. And then you make some more advancement and you accept everything. No. Because you see Krishna everywhere. This was spoken by Krishna a few verses back. That everything, no. Yomam Pashati Sarvatra. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. Then when one can, can uh, see me everywhere, no. Sarvam cha mai pashati and see everything within me, then such a person, tasya ham na pranashami, such a person is never lost to me, no? Sacha me na pranashati, and also I am never lost to that person. So this is the vision that Krishna wants to give Uddhava, and, and this story is meant for that. It is meant to show Uddhava that if you're Krishna conscious, nothing can bewilder you. Of course, bewilderment is an interesting thing because this is what is being stated here. You know, uh, that here, uh, the king comes upon this, this Brahman and he says, you learn it, you're ca capable, learn it, expert, handsome, eloquent, but yet you have no, you don't seem to have uh, any interest in this world. You have no desires, no? Nehazi kinchit. You have no desires. And actually you appear like a, like a crazy person. No? You appear to have no knowledge. You appear like a ghostly creature. Just like Prahlad Maharaj when he was uh, surveying his kingdom, he came upon one 
Brahman who is practicing uh, the Python yoga. No, uh, we, that's not so recommended. Python yoga in this age. No, you may you may end up starving. No? Like, just a skeleton there. No? Uh, uh, but in in previous ages, so. Uh, Prahlad Maharaj said the same thing. He, I can see you are, you are a saintly person. I can see your words are very eloquent. No, I, they must have been talking a little bit before he made that declaration. I can see that you're very learned, but you appear to be a little uh, corpulent, no? a little fat. No? Uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said that he said, I don't like so much to see my disciples become fat. It means that they're a little too much uh, involved in material life. Although I've observed, uh, I see brahmacharis sometimes, they're very lean and everything. Then they get married and all of a sudden, you know, there's more ghee or something. You know, they become a little more, uh, a little more full. You know. And so, but this, he was very fatty. And he was lying on the ground, you know. So Prahlad Maharaj said, may I understand? You're such an advanced person, but you appear uh, to be like an, a materialist, you know. Just like when uh, Gadadhar, you know, Mukunda came to Gadadhar and said, you want to meet a saintly person? I know that you love saintly persons. Would you like to meet uh, the most saintly person? Actually, uh, Actually, uh, Lord Chaitanya was actually anticipating he would come. He said, Pundarik, Pundarik, Pundarik. No. So this person has come. You, you would, uh, yeah, of course. And so he took him there and he saw Pundarik sitting on a opulent silk cushions with silk clothing, his hair, uh, uh, you know, full of perfumed oil, Servants fanning him, a big hookah, you know. I don't know what the hookah was there for, maybe just to scare off, you know, devote, scare off people from glorifying him, you know. And all these things, opulence, his house was so opulent. Gadadhar was bewildered, you know. He was bewildered. How can this be? Uh, how can this be a great devotee? And Mukunda, he could anticipate, he could see that Gadadhar, he could see his mind. And so he spoke a verse from the Bhagavatam. And Pundarik Vidyanidhi began to, went into ecstasy, kicked everything away. The servants tried to hold him down. He kicked them away. No. For eight hours, he was in ecstasy. Eight hours. No. And Gadadhar was just watching him, praying, thinking, what an offense I have made. What an offense I have made against this saintly person. I could not understand. No. Iha yasa harer dasye kamana manasa gira niki las vasya vasta su jivan muktasa uchete. Rupa Goswami says that a, uh, if, one, if one must live in this world as a devotee, one should make sure that one's thoughts words and actions are fully dedicated to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although one may appear to be a materialistic person, he is actually a liberated soul. And so a devotee may appear, just like there's so many devotees here that work, you know, uh, just like uh, the first time I went to India, uh, we came to, after the Mayapur festival, we came to Calcutta with Prabhupada, and of course, there was one room in the temple. And of course, Prabhupada was in that room. And then the sannyasis, they stayed up in the roof. And everybody else had to stay around the lake. But I had diarrhea and all kinds of problems, being my first time. You know. uh, and I was thinking, oh my God, how am I going to stay on this lake? I have to go to the bathroom every 15 minutes. You know. and, and this life member came. He, took, he said, you need a place to stay? I said, yes, yes. He took me to his big house. He gave me a car with a servant, you know, and a nice room. But it turned out to be right next to the Bhag Bazar temple. You know. I heard, the, like in the morning, I heard chanting. So I went and I saw this one man there chanting Japa. 
Then I came the next morning at three in the morning, I saw him chanting Japa. Next day I came at 2.30 in the morning, I saw him there chanting Japa. So I went and I asked him, uh, uh, so you come here every day? Oh yes. No. I am, I am God brother of your guru. No. I come every day and uh, I chant. I come at one o'clock, chant my 64 rounds, then I go to work. No. So when he's in the temple, He's a Mahabhagavat practically, no? but uh, and people see him in his work, he's just some ordinary person. So anyway, no. Gadadhar, he begged him, please allow me to be your disciple and let me serve you for the rest of your life, the rest of my life and the rest of your life. And that way, maybe I can make up for my offense. That's how seriously we should take an offense. So uh, it's not easy. Sometimes it's bewildering to see a great personality. No. Very bewildering. No. Uh, here, the king is bewildered. Uh, how can such a qualified person look like a ghostly, act like a ghostly creature? No. So much bewilderment there is in... Uh, in seeing great personalities, even the Supreme Personality of God, he can be bewildering. Everyone is bewildered no, by seeing Krishna. No. Either you're bewildered one way or another. No. Either you're bewildered by Yoga Maya, which is of course very nice bewilderment, or you're bewildered by Maha Maya, which is not so nice. Of course everyone thinks it's very nice. They think it's so nice that when they hear about Krishna consciousness, just like Prabhupada said, when I first came to your country and I saw the modes of passion and ignorance, I thought that they, as soon as I said something about Krishna, they would say, Swamiji, why don't you go home? No. But Prabhupada said, but now I see that everyone is accepting it very nicely. This is by Krishna's grace. So, everyone is bewildered. Queen Kunti, she was bewildered. She said, Naveda chit Bhagavam Chikir Shitam. Your human-like activities are very bewildering. How you do all these things, how you chat, sometimes you chastise, sometimes you reward, sometimes you appear to be born, but you're, you're unborn. Uh, who knows what the reason you appeared for? Was it for Devaki or Vasudev? Was it what? Who can understand? This is all very bewildering, no? Uh, and especially when one understands that nayasya kashchit daito sti karichit dvashascha yasmin vishama matirninam. Especially when one understands that you have no favoritism toward anyone. And you have no uh, dislike for anyone. Who can understand how you act in all these ways? But uh, the only way to understand it is that uh, you, uh, you appear to be partial. But that partiality is created within the minds of the living entities in this world. No. We, create, we create a conception of Krishna. We create a conception of life in this world by ignorance, by being bewildered by the Lord's uh, uh, material energy. No. And so, and then she said, even me more bewildering when I see your, Vrinda your Vrindavan pastimes are be more, more bewildering. No. Totally bewildering. No. Kopya daditvaya kritagasi dhamatavad. That this gopi, she took a rope and she tied you up, no? And um, that yate uh, dashashu kalilangjana sambramaksham and tears were flowing from your eyes and you yourself, you seem to be bewildered, no? This is totally bewildering to me, no? That paktram niniya bhaya bhavanaya stitasya that you were looking, your face was looking down, you were crying, tears were coming from your eyes, uh, and you appeared to be very fearful. No? 
Samam bimo hayati. Oh, this is so bewildering to me. No, especially bir api apiyad bibati, because fear personified is afraid of you, and you are afraid of Mother Yashoda. No, so Krishna, he can be very bewildering. But when he bewilders his devotees, just like he bewildered Yashoda Mai when she looked in his mouth. Because she said, I want to see if you have dirt in your mouth. And Krishna thought, she wants to see dirt? I'll show her all the dirt. You know? She thought that she would find a little piece of dirt. I'll show her unlimited dirt. You know? And so she became philosophical. And she was thinking, is, who is this Krishna? Is he really my son? You know? Who is this person on my lap? And Krishna thought, oh, I don't like this. You know? I don't want my Mother Yashoda to be a philosopher. No. Philosophy is all right for devotees who are trying to understand me or for devotees who are explaining me. Then they must have philosophy. But for someone who is situated in pure rasa, you know, in, in rasa, philosophy is not very interesting. No. When one is fully established in their rasa with Krishna, then what is the use of philosophy? No. They simply want to... See, Krishna, when they get into philosophy, Krishna doesn't like it so much. You know? When the cowherd men gathered together with Nanda Maharaj after seeing Krishna lift the Govardhan hill, they became very philosophical. You know? And then Krishna said, yeah, he said, all right, I'll show you something and then make you forget about it all. You know? Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll admit I'm the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then he made them forget. You know? Sometimes the gopis... Krishna would let them see. He said, I am Paramatma. When Krishna met the gopis in Kurukshetra, he said, why do you want me to go to Vrindavan? I'm Paramatma. You just meditate on me in your, in your hearts. No. And, and, of course, Radharani immediately said, this is ridiculous. I'm trying to forget you. No. And I can't forget you. Therefore, what's the use of meditating on you? No. Even when I try to forget you, I can't do that. No. And what to speak of the gopis? They're always meditating on you. No. So what is the use of yoga for us? So all these situations are bewildering. But that bewilderment is so wonderful. But our bewilderment due to the duality of good and bad, heat and cold, uh, honor and dishonor, all the dualities of this world, this type of bewilderment is not very desirable. And we have to give it up. So speaking of giving it up, I have to give up speaking right now because I have to go to an appointment. But I'll just stop here if there's maybe one question. If anyone has a question or a comment, no. I can maybe take one question, then I have to go to an appointment. No. Deal with my duality. No. Any question? No question? Okay, thank you very much. All glory to Sri Guru, Sri Goranga, Sri Prabhupada ki, Sri Sri Radha Gopinath ki, Sri Sigurani Tai ki, Sri Gopal ji ki.